However, that won't be sufficient to offset those operational cash flows. When we combine these amounts, a million has left Ebert Park over 10 years. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Um... Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we're off to Lancashire to unravel the financial story of Blackburn Rovers. Flashback to 2013, Rovers found themselves in the bottom half of the championship. Despite improvements in subsequent years, Blackburn took a dive into the third tier in 2017. Rovers quickly bounced back the following year. And after that, the Blue and White settled into a string of mid-table finishes in the championship. On the sidelines, Ewood Park witnessed a revolving door of 10 managers in 10 years. Keane, Black, Berg. Boyer, Appleton, Boyer, Lambert, Coyle, Mowbray, Thomason. Now let's shift our focus away from the field. What's been happening behind the scenes? Revenue begins to decline in 2014 as Premier League parachute payments dried up, hitting a low in 2018 with relegation to League One. Revenue stabilised upon Rovers' return to the Championship. Peak revenue was in 2014 at 30 million. Now in 2022, it's just over half that amount. What's led to the situation? Let's break it down by revenue source. First, let's talk about match day revenues. These peaked in 2013 at over 4 million, but have since dropped to around 3. Match day revenue now makes up 20% of the total. What's behind the underlying attendance figures? Initially around 15,000, attendance dropped alongside performance. Over 10 years, attendance fell from 15 to 13,500, well below Ewood Park's 31,000 capacity. Next, let's explore media or broadcasting revenues. These also topped in 2014 at 22 million, boosted by Premier League parachutes. In the current championship landscape, they've dropped to 8 million. Commercial revenues have remained steady at around 5 million. By league position, there is a correlation between revenue and performance, and on average, championship years deliver 20 million of revenue, over double that single season in League One. Um, football can't be cruel then. Now, let's dive into profits. It's not a pretty sight. Despite parachute payments, the Blue and Whites have been in the red every year, racking up hefty losses. The correlation sin in revenue disappears here, with average losses of 17 million in the championship matching those in League One. So what's happening? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button, and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Wages outweigh revenue every year. Not a great start. Despite dropping from their peak of 37 million in 2014, staff costs have remained well over 100%, reaching 187% in that league one year. The trend is reflected in staff numbers, with Rovers cutting 60 positions over the past decade. But how much bang did Blackburn get for their buck? In League One, points cost around £200,000 each, whilst in the second tier, that figure rose to an average of 450. But even after factoring in staff costs, Blackburn have been in the red every year. Next up, operating costs. These were substantial in 2013 and 14 before stabilising afterward. But what caused those initial expenses? It's important to note that Blackburn faced scrutiny under financial fair play regulations back in 2014. To enhance profitability from 2015 onwards, Blackburn took an additional 6 million PL hit in 2014 due to onerous contracts, essentially paying off players like Dixon Atuhu and DJ Campbell to reduce the wage bill. The EBITDA profile illustrates the challenges of managing costs after relegation from the Premier League. Now let's talk about stadium and facilities. Typically, there isn't much to discuss, but in 2021, Blackburn earned 12 million in net income from the sale of training ground facilities to another company within owner Venkis. It's important to note that this transaction was scheduled for settlement by 30th of June 2023, so we'll need to wait for those financial accounts to be submitted for an update. Lastly, let's discuss transfer fees. Blackburn initially faced significant costs as they adjusted to life after the Premier League. They made useful profits in 2016 and 17, albeit at the expense of losing several high-profile players. The profit in 2022 was boosted by the sale of Adam Armstrong to Southampton. 
Whilst helping the profit picture in those years, it still losses all around at Ewood Park. On average, margins have plunged to a negative 86% in the championship, with an even bleaker margin in League One. Any surprise to you in that decision? No, not, not looking at that. I mean... Let's see if the cash matches up with the profit narrative. As always, we're examining the combination of cash from operations and the transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, mirrors the profit picture. Cash has been flowing out of Blackburn every year for the past decade, with over £160 million leaving the door, evenly distributed between both divisions. Now, let's turn our focus back to transfers. After initial outflows, there was some relief with player sales in 2016 and 17, although the numbers decreased as the club stabilised. Overall, Blackburn just broke even on transfer fees, bringing in 800,000 over the 10 years. However, that won't be sufficient to offset those operational cash flows. When we combine these amounts, 159 million has left Ebert Park over 10 years. Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? Um... So who's covering the cost? Cash has been consistently injected into Rovers. By 2022, this amount had reached 159 million, effectively matching the outflows we just saw. Most of this is direct from Venkis, with smaller amounts taken as bank loans and advances from the Football League. So what's transpired since then? Blackburn achieved another top half finish, falling just six points shy of the playoff spots. However, off the field, more uncertainty arose, with owners Venkis entangled in a dispute with the Indian government, leading to reported funding issues. Will this significantly impact the future at Ewood Park? Only time will tell. See you next time.